the topic is how to choose an arctos or real time operating system module 5 kindly download the ppt from one drive before choosing an arctos for your embedded system you need to consider functional and non functional requirements now let us look into the functional requirements first one processor support embedded system has a processor and the arctos should support that processor the arctos must support the architecture of that processor so choose a suitable arctos that supports the processor second functional requirement is memory requirements os requires rom for holding the os files and when the embedded system is in operation os also requires a working memory known as ram ram is used for loading the os services in short os requires both ram and rom we know that embedded systems have limited memory we also know that every os requires a ram and rom of a certain minimum size our embedded system should satisfy this minimal ram and rom requirements of the os otherwise that os will not be suitable for our embedded system the third functional requirement is real time capabilities it is not mandatory that all embedded operating systems are real time in behavior real time behavior of an os depends on the task or process scheduling policies kindly choose an os with excellent task or process scheduling policy now if you want to manufacture an embedded system with real time capabilities then choose an os with suitable real time capabilities before choosing an os analyze the real time capabilities of the os kindly choose the operating system that meets the standards for real time capabilities the fourth functional requirement is kernel and interrupt latency the kernel of the os may disable interrupts while executing certain critical services this may lead to interrupt latency this may lead to a delay in handling interrupts this may lead to a delay in responding to external events if the response requirements of your embedded system is very high that means if you want your embedded system to respond to external events quickly then the interrupt latency should be minimum the fifth functional requirement is inter process communication and task synchronization the implementation of inter process communication and task synchronization is dependent on the os kernel the various options available to implement ipc are mailbox message queue etc certain kernels provide lots of options to implement ipc and task synchronization whereas other kernels provide limited options now there are certain kernels that implement policies for avoiding priority inversion issues in resource sharing scenarios so always choose the best os the sixth functional requirement is modularization support the operating system may provide a bunch of features but among these features our embedded system may require only a few features so if the os supports modularization then the os consists of many modules from these modules the developer can choose the essential modules and then he can recompile the os image in short this process results in the reduction in the size of the os image the size of the os image will be reduced because now the os image only contains those os modules which are essential for our embedded system we know that embedded systems have limited memory so reducing the size of the os image is very important Windows CE is an example for a highly modular operating system.
the seventh functional requirement is support for networking and communication choose an os that provides support for networking and communication choose an os that has a kernel that will provide stack implementation and driver support for communication interfaces and networking the final functional requirement is development language support operating systems include runtime libraries for running applications written in languages like java and c#. Hash. Java Virtual Machine or JVM is required for running Java applications. .NET Compact Framework is required for running .NET applications. So choose an OS which includes components like JVM and .NET Compact Framework. Now let us look into the non-functional requirements. First one, custom developed or off the shelf. You have two options. Either you can develop an operating system for yourself or you can use an off-the-shelf readily available operating system. A readily available operating system can either be open source product or it can be a commercial product. Open source means free of cost, commercial means paid. So you have two options. Custom developed operating system or off-the-shelf operating system. Now the decision on which one to select depends on certain factors. If you are planning to develop an operating system for yourself, you need to consider the development cost, the development time and the availability of skilled resources. Skilled resources are skilled laborers or employees who are required to develop the OS. Only if the skilled resources or skilled laborers are available, only then you can develop the operating system. Now, if you are planning to buy a readily available operating system, then you need to consider the licensing fees for the OS because the OS is paid. The second non-functional requirement is cost. If you are planning to develop an OS, then you need to consider the total cost for developing the OS. If you are planning to buy an OS, then you need to consider the total cost for buying the OS and maintaining it. In short, the cost must be considered before selecting an OS. The third non-functional requirement is development and debugging tools availability. This is a critical decision making factor. There are certain operating systems which are superior in performance but they lack tools for supporting development and debugging. So choose an operating system for which development and debugging tools are available. The fourth non-functional requirement is ease of use. If you are planning to buy a commercial Aptos, then buy an Aptos which is easier to use. The fifth and final non-functional requirement is after sales. If you are planning to buy a commercial Aptos, then buy an Aptos which has good after sales services. After sales services are provided by the vendor of the Aptos to the customers of the Aptos. Usually after the purchase of the Aptos, issues like bugs occur. In such scenarios, the vendor of the Aptos will provide after sales services in the form of email and calls. These after sales services are provided to the customers of the Aptos. These after sales services will help the customers to solve issues like bugs. So if you're planning to buy a commercial Aptos, make sure that good after sales services are available. This topic is over. Thank you.